So, y'all think you're hot shit just because you watched a thousand episodes of One Piece, huh? Ha 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 ha, you sweet summer children. You want to know what dedication is? Try watching a 10 year old boy and his pet rat traverse the countryside and help random people with their personal problems for over 1,200 episodes and then talk to me about self-destructive behavior. So, there's this little known franchise called Pokemon, you might have heard of it, that involves said kid and his Pikachu thing making friends by beating up each other's pets. It's quite wholesome, really. Now, if you've had the godforsaken honor of experiencing the four kids era of anime back in the 100s, then chances are you've at least caught an episode or two. Nothing beats a jelly filled. <laughs> now, I imagine that most of you who did watch this show probably fell off sometime during the great dub recasting of 2006, and I don't blame you. But I do know that there are a select few of you that aren't pussies that managed to stick around because being in your near 30s and having a parasocial relationship with a kid's anime is somehow cool. Yeah. Guess what category I fell into? Okay, look, I brag on this show a lot because it's easy, but in all earnestness, I really do love the Pokemon anime. It made a lasting impact on me in the 90s, and it's not just because my first episode involved a cute redhead in a mermaid bikini. It's no exaggeration to say that the Annie Poke was my best friend when my most likely neurodivergent ass had a grand total of zero friends during my elementary and middle school days. I was and still am captivated by Pokemon and this dumb kid's ambition to be the very best like no one ever was because honestly, rooting for him was my weird way of rooting for myself. And uh, let me tell you, being in this fandom is like eating the exact same pepperoni and mushroom pizza every Thursday of every week of every month for the last 25 years. Sometimes the crust is a little flimsy, sometimes you get a few extra slices of the roni in there, but it's ultimately the exact same piece of comfort food every time you order it. Like yeah, sometimes Pokemon really drops the ball and the fandom has a collective stroke. My dude, I was there for Thunder Armor, the Iris Hate, and oh, thank God if you weren't there for when the Goat Frog went down. On the reverse side, I was also there for the anime's best moments that suckered us in like a bunch of pansies. Like Paul's edgelord ass in DP, like I know you remember that guy. Or when my girl Serena basically won the Ash Bowl and the whole fandom collectively jizzed themselves. Or let's not forget when my boy became the Honest to God League champion and all these real life news stations hyped him up like it was a legitimate sports tournament. <laughs> oh man, what a time. So, it's 2019 and as per usual, the newest saga of the Pokemon anime decides to shake up the status quo a little bit. We get two new kiddos in the form of Go with an H and Chloe, who's somehow not as pretty as him. The whole shtick this time is that Ash is taking a voluntary pay cut from being a goddamn league champion to help Chloe's pops with his research. And he's like, cool, so what's my starting salary? Oh, well, it's more of an unpaid internship deal, hence why I can't legally call you my assistant, but hey, I can pay you invaluable exposure instead. So Ash takes the job because the poor kid doesn't know any better and Go tags along because he wants to catch Mew even though they're already in Vermilion and the truck is right over there. As for Chloe, she doesn't really care about Pokemon, which as we know is a class 4 felony and subject to government endorsed lynching. So they go around the various regions with their unlimited airfare, help out the locals, catch a few mons, and in all fairness, I did enjoy the series at first. Sure, the new direction felt a little off, but I figured, eh, I'll get used to it. Then one day, I missed an episode, and I was all, ah shit, I gotta go watch it now. Then I missed a couple more episodes, and I was like, ah damn, well, I wasn't really into the synopsis of this one, so I'll just catch up when I have time. Then I missed a few more episodes, and I was like, yeah, I'll just watch them whenever. It wasn't until I was 10 episodes behind that I had to accept the unspeakable truth. Journeys was boring me. Yeah, you would think that would have happened to me already with a show that's been cycling plots since 1997, but no. For the very first time in my lifelong journey as a Poke Stan, I didn't care about the anime. And I was like, oh God, am I a normie now? Have I finally outgrown all the beautifully produced cartoons and anime that defined an entire generation? Am I becoming a well-adjusted adult who works 60 hours a week and gets mad when my wife doesn't have dinner on the table because I think she doesn't do anything? Do I have to stop putting several weeks worth of drawings into my content and start doing 
reaction videos instead? Nah, it turns out Journeys is just hella mid. Not terrible, mind you, just very, very mid. And for the longest time, I couldn't really explain it. On the surface, Journeys is just more of the same. It's still Ash catching the Mons, bumming around the countryside, and solving the day-to-day -day problems of a world with organized cockfighting. There wasn't anything specific about Journeys that I could attribute my apathy towards, so why did watching it leave me with this general bleh feeling in my gut? And then BOOM! It hit me. The reason I couldn't point my interest into any particular direction is because Journeys doesn't really have a direction. Like, I know we all dump on Ash because the whole Pokemon Master thing is vague as all hell, but honestly, that never mattered to me. At the end of the day, it's a personal goal, it's an honorable goal, and more importantly, it's an Ash goal. Like, yeah, job recruiters hate to see it, but aiming to be the very best like no one ever was works well for this series because it provides the anime with a very clear direction for the viewers to follow. And I think that's where Journeys kind of lost me because for the longest time, it felt like the show was taking an extended vacation. Like, do you really expect me to believe that Ash would spend his time doing research of all things and fucking off to do whatever this John Oliver looking ass wants him to do? Like, there's a reason Gary went off to do the studying thing and not Ash, okay? I'm just saying. Then there's Go. Straight up, I actually do like this guy for his personality. He's bright, he's analytical, he's got emotional attachment issues, and he'd much rather spend his time collecting and deconstructing Pokemon lore than have a traditional social life. So yeah, I relate to him on a spiritual level. Thing is, dude's got this hard on for the super rare Mew, which involves catching every Pokemon in sight with virtually no effort. And yeah, game accurate and all, but it isn't exactly as uh, wholesome as some of the other twerp streams, you know what I mean? He ends up volunteering for some college funded research project that promises to help him catch Mew, and I don't have the heart to tell the kid that he just got suckered into a Ponzi scheme. As for Chloe, her only real crime is that she's just not there enough. Like, they got a really good thing going with this girl. She doesn't particularly like Pokemon, she doesn't know what she wants to do with her life because she's only fucking 10 years old, and she gets all miffed that the world thinks she's got some kind of mental disorder just because she doesn't want to revolve her life around deadly battle monsters. Girl's definitely keeping it real the most, and it helps that she gets all the best episodes to boot. I just wish she was more, you know, around. Oh shit, I'm doing that YouTube thing where I just recap the series without providing any transformative critique and pretending it's a review. My bad. So, you really want to know why I'm not horny for Journeys like all the other series? Fine. Pokemon Journeys' biggest weakness is... Pokemon. Yes, Pokemon is holding back Pokemon. What? Okay, look, hear me out. Remember back in 2016 when Pokemon Go was a crypto before crypto and people were literally killing themselves to capture digital images? Well, like it or not, that game basically redefined the modern Pokemon franchise by reminding us to go outside, build a community, and touch some fucking grass. All of which I can appreciate. That said, and I say this as someone who still occasionally plays, I fucking hate Pokemon Go. Like, Pokemon are supposed to be these living, breathing creatures that you learn to love and cherish as your very own, not trophies you can collect behind a soft paywall. I just think the whole gameplay of throwing a ball and catch without battling runs antithetical to the spirit of Pokemon, but that's just me. Anyway, the launch of Go saw the birth of two different fandoms. You got the Ash Ketchum Millennials who grew up on the main game's philosophy of being the coolest kid in town. You know, catching a team of six, dismantling a crime syndicate, and becoming the league champ with your level 81 Charizard and five HM slaves. AKA, yours truly. And then over here, you got the Go Zoomers. As the name implies, you probably got into Pokemon during the Go resurgence where it was all about catching cute critters, bonding with your IRL friends over who your favorite Mon was, and basically not really giving a shit over things like IVs or competitive play. Huh, in retrospect, that's uh, also me. Keep in mind, I'm not trying to be all, how do you do, fellow kids, and say we should kick the babies out for entering our space or whatever. No, 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 none of that. At the end of the day, social ineptitude is what makes us all Pokemon fans, and we should always be lifting ourselves up rather than cut ourselves down. Now, you may be wondering, well, which one is the anime for then? Well, here's the thing. It's neither. Yes, the series draws elements from both demographics, but for the last 22 years or so, it's been largely doing its own thing. 
Like, even when Sun and Moon was basically a slice of life and people were having conniption fits over Ash's redesign, the series just never really gave a fuck. It had its own story to tell, met the minimum requirements imposed on it by the greater needs of the franchise, and didn't really concern itself with things like continuity or game logic unless it wanted to. Annie Poke has never apologized for what it was, so weirdly enough, I always kinda respected that. But that's why the intro to Journeys was such a slog for me to get through. It never really felt like the kids or anyone else were doing anything for themselves and that they were mostly there as spokespeople to advertise the franchise for us. Not to say it was all mid though, there are definitely some diamonds in the rough here and tellingly enough, it was always when they focused on someone's personal growth. But I tell ya, if the Masters Tournament had never been introduced, I in all likelihood would have dropped the anime. But then they added an anime exclusive VGC to the show and suddenly I saw light. A tangible ghoul that has Ash Ketchum written all over it. Suddenly the battles meant something more than just spectacle and Ash was now using that patented Ketchum empathy to build a lovable team that'll someday kick that Charizard fucker off his throne. At the same time, Go was now establishing emotional connections with his Pokemon and Chloe got an Eevee because all girls like Eevees, right? Right? everyone suddenly felt a little more alive to me, and while I'm no psychic type, I'd like to think that at some point, OLM realized that they couldn't sustain the series on passive goals alone, so they introduced these elements to bring some of that agency back. Keyword being some. I definitely appreciate that the Masters 8 was a series way of celebrating the show's run, and as a longtime watcher, I ate up the fan service like a total slut. But sad to say, a lot of Journey's foundational problems were still holding it back, and what was once a show that knew exactly what it was, had now become a series trying to be multiple things at once, without being able to commit to any of it fully. And I could go on and on about the various ways this show sucks, from the downgraded animation, to the lack of personal stakes, and how Team Rocket's relationship with Morpeko didn't have any payoff, blah 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 blah. But honestly, this video has already gone way too fucking long, and if I keep going, I'm gonna end up be pulling a cinema sins and become the very thing I was seeking to parody. So yes, after taking an extended hiatus from this series that could very well be classified as dropping, I did eventually end up making it to the end. And while I'm proud of myself for catching up in time to watch my boy become a goddamn world champion, it's also leaving me with a terrifying sense of finality. At the time I'm making this, there hasn't been a peep as to what's to come for the series afterwards. So now I have to face the very real possibility that the Annie Poke is just done. Like, yeah, to be continued still applies to Ash and all, but for all of us, and I think more than any other time y'all theorized the series would end, this could actually be the end, and I'm not really sure how to deal with that. I've followed Ash and Pikachu for 25 fucking years. It's pulled me out of some really dark headspaces growing up, and I never would have found my love for animation or even made this freaking channel if it hadn't existed. It's been a guiding light for me for all the times I just wanted to quit at life. And not to be too much of a drama queen, but if this is truly the end of an era, then I'd like to leave some parting words for all of the friends we've made. Mist, monotypes are tough as shit to run, and I'll always respect the commitment. Brock, you're an inspiration to simps and male wives everywhere. Keep doing your thing. Trace, no one ever really gave a fuck about you, but I did, so you're alright, my man. May, you were never a Misty replacement, and you're a hella great coordinator. Let's grab lunch sometime, yeah? Max, you can be a little shit sometimes, but that just means you have a lot of room to grow. Don, no need to worry, am I right? Iris, I don't care what the haters say, you got a lot of spunk, and you're one hell of a champion. Silent, everyone's just jealous that they're not as articulate as you. Hey, you're gonna wipe up Iris in a few years, yeah? Clement. It's okay to be gay. I'm sure Bonnie will understand. Bonnie, your brother's gay. Serena, as a certified Amor shipper, you have absolutely won the Ash Bowl in my heart. Lock him in, girl. Kiawe, you're extra as fuck and I love it. Also, your mom is hot. Mallow, I want an invite to your wedding. Lily, I want an invite to that same wedding. Lana, keep scaring the shit out of people, girl. It never gets old. Sophocles, you're the only tech bro I truly respect. Go, from one introvert to another, there's a lot of really good people out there that love the same things you do. Don't be afraid to meet them.
Chloe, you don't have to force the whole Pokemon thing, okay? Just take it easy and enjoy life while you can. Jesse, James, Meowth, and Wobbuffet. You fruity ass losers are my absolute favorite characters in the show. If you ever decide to quit Team Rocket, let's grab some dinner sometime, yeah? On me. And Ash and Pikachu. Thanks for always being there for me, guys. Godspeed, c'est la vie, as the journey continues. Fuck, it's not over yet! Itsu mo itsu demo umaku yoku naunte Oshu o wa doko ni mo nai kedo Itsu demo itsu mo honki de ikite ruko itsu tachi ga iru